Okay, so Nick, when you're ready, over to you. Well, I'm ready, yes. Uh, thank you, sir, Rob. Um, so uh, what I, I'm going to uh, talk about is the the idea of the commune as, as the basic uh, building block of a, a future anarchist communist society. And um, for example, um, Gratchev, who was a Russian anarchist, uh, said that the basic social and economic cell of the anarchist society is the free independent commune. And Kropotkin was to say the communes of the next revolution will not only break down the state and substitute free federation for parliamentary rule, they will part with parliamentary rule within the commune itself. They will trust the free organization of food supply and production to free groups of workers, which will federate with like groups in other cities and villages, not through the medium of a communal parliament, but directly to accomplish their aim. Bonnie, is the door. Yeah, it looks like the census people have come round. Maybe they're a bit of a... Yeah. All right, yes. Um, so um, we should look at the origins origins of anarchist communism. Um, uh, it developed from the workers' movement within the first mass organisation of the working class, the uh, first international or the International Workers' Association. And it had its, had its roots in the communist current that developed during the French Revolution around uh, Gracchus Babeuf and Sylvain Marachal. And then with the uh, communist banquets of Belleville um, in, in um, this is a hilly uh, working class neighborhood in, in Paris. Um, and, and then with, um, and then with um, the, the, the French, um, uh, Cabay and uh, and the German Wilhelm Weitling, they they do uh, the idea of communism. It cross pollinated with the with the uh, libertarian current that emerged amongst the most advanced uh, French workers in the first international. Themselves in contact with the Russian Bakunin. There he is on the right. Who had developed similar ideas to them. And it mutated into the idea of anarchist communism, which uh, appears to have simultaneously emerged amongst French exiles in Switzerland within the Swiss Jura Federation of the First International itself and in the Italian section of the International. So you have French workers like Dumothere and um, in Italian intellectuals like Cavelli appear to have assisted in its birth. But it was eagerly taken out of those who've been close to Bakunin in the uh, international, like Malatesta, <laughs> Costa, Cafiera, and Bruce, uh, by Elise Reclu, and by latecomers like um, Kropotkin. This development would have likely have happened anyway, but uh, it was the apocal events of the Paris Commune. Of 1871, that really left a mark on the birth of anarchist communism as an idea. Um, so you have the uh, two different concepts of the uh, of the uh, of the Paris Commune. Uh, mark on one hand. Uh, with the concept of a worker state and a dictation of the proletariat and um, an anarchist reading of the, of the commune with free federation of a system of communes and the abolition of the state. Um, okay, could you go on? Thanks. Um, the, in the Paris Commune, workshops are abandoned by the employers who fled the city could, were handed over to a cooperative association of workers. Theatres and museums open for all without charge were collectivised and placed under the management of the Federation of Artists. Some 300 sculptors, architects, lithographers and painters participated in this body. So those are interested in developments, but even more important was the development of the clubs 
Can you go on to the next one? Thanks. Um, uh, they, the, 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 the revolutionary club sprang up in nearly every arrondissement, uh, which is a French neighbourhood. Uh, and they were open every evening. They offered citizens the opportunity to meet after work to fully discuss the social and political situation, to check what their representatives have achieved and suggest alternative ways of solving day-to-day -day problems. They were horizontal associations which favoured the formation and expression of popular sovereignty as well as the creation of genuine spaces of sisterhood and fraternity where everyone could breathe the intoxicating air of control over their own destiny. I mean, this was, uh, these uh, grassroots uh, organisations um, emerged um, parallel to the development of the, this central body of the, the commune, um, which proved to be a slow moving, uh, unimaginative body. I mean, the real, for me, uh, you know, and, and others, the real essence of importance of the economy were, were the grassroots organisations, the, the clubs uh, and um, so, so the general democracy that the common are sort of established ambitious and difficult tasks. Popular sovereignty required the participation of the greatest possible number of citizens. From late March on, Paris witnessed the mushroom in of central commissions, local subcommittees, revolutionary clubs and soldiers' battalions, which flanked the already complex duopoly of the Council of the Commune and the Central Committee of the National Guard. Okay. Could you move on, please? Um, obviously, um, the, the Commune um, had its flaws. Um, on the, on the plus side, citizenship of the commune extended all the strove for its development and foreigners enjoyed the same social rights as French people. The principle of equality was evident in the prominent role played by the 3,000 foreigners active in the commune. So you had Poles, Italians, Hungarians, Germans, uh, um, also, also very many um, nationalities that, that took an equal part in commune. On, on the minus side, women did not have the right to vote, even they played a, a key role in the commune. In fact, they played a very important role in, in the commune uh, at, at all levels, uh, well, apart from the, um, the, the, um, the central body of the commune. Okay, move on, please. Could you move on, please? Uh, as Kropotkin pointed out uh, on the limitations of the Paris Commune, the Commune of 1871 could not be any more than a sketch. Born at the end of a war, surrounded by two armies ready to give a hand in crushing the people, it dared not declare itself openly socialist and proceeded neither to the expropriation of capital nor to the organisation of work, nor even to a general inventory of the city's resources. Nor did it break with the tradition of the state of representative government, and it did not attempt to achieve within the commune that organisation from the simple to the complex. It adumbrated by proclaiming the independence and free federation of communes. OK, could you pass on, please? Um, Kropotkin um, outlined the potential of future communes which would proclaim and establish their independence by direct socialist revolutionary action, abolishing private property, not wait to expropriate the holders of social capital. They will take possession on the spot and use it without delay. And they will organise themselves in the workshops to continue the work. Well, what they will produce will be what is wanted by the masses, not what gives the highest profit to employers. They will exchange their hovels for healthy dwellings in the houses of the rich. They will organise themselves to turn to immediate use the wealth stored up in the towns. It's interesting, uh, in, um, during the Russian Revolution, there were um, anarchists interpreted the exchange of their hovels for healthy dwellings in the houses of the rich. And uh, in, in Moscow and Petrograd, uh, many uh, large empty mansions were, were commandeered by the 
the anarchist communist groups. Could you uh, pass on, please? Um, so Kropotkin saw it, and and, if, and we in the anarchist communist group, uh, anarchist communists in general, see the communes are. Uh, which are the basis of French government, basically the communes, commune is a municipality. They will be seized through revolution to create autonomous communes. And um, Paul Bruce, who, who at that time was an anarchist before he became a reformist, said that the autonomous commune, there you have the means, but not the ends, that being a far sweeping revolution. Okay. Um, and um, Bakunin expanded on, on the idea of the common. He, he said that, I believe that equality must be established in the world by the spontaneous organisation of labour and the collective ownership of property by freely organised producers associations and by the equally spontaneous federation of communes to replace the domineering paternalistic state. Could you pass on, please? And we see the uh, the communes, the main form of organisation for all of the oppressed. Um, organising in workplace is not enough um, because it doesn't include um, women working in the home. It doesn't include the unemployed, the old, and and the young. Um, and it communes will be set up in in both urban and rural areas. It's obvious that workplace organisation is crucial, but it is not a substitute for the for the for the commune. Could you uh, press on, please? So within the uh, Jura Federation of the First International in 1880, um, uh, they um, these ideas uh, about anarchist communism uh, began to develop. So they, they talked about what are the powers of the commune? Upkeep of all social wealth, monitoring uses of various capital elements, subsoil, land, yeah. buildings, tools and raw materials by the trades bodies. Oversight of labour organisation as far as general interest is concerned. Organising its change and eventually distribution and consumption of products. Maintenance of highways, buildings, thoroughfares and public gardens. Organising insurance against all accidents. Health service, security service, local statistics. Organising the maintenance, training and education of children. Sponsoring the arts, sciences, discoveries and applications. We also want this local life in these different spheres of activity to be free, like the organisation of a trade. Free organisation of individuals, groups and neighbourhoods alike to meet the various local services we have enumerated. Okay, pass on please. Um, so, um, this, the communal idea is seen as the most viable way of expressing, of organising the whole of the oppressor, not just in the workplace. It would it, be the means of expression of the mass of the oppressed, whether workers in large or small factories, women, the unemployed, youth, the old, and it would be as efficacious in the countryside amongst the peasantry and the agrarian workers as it would be amongst the urban masses. The organisation of um, workers in the workplace was seen as an extremely valuable adjunct to, to that, which is not as yet seen as a substitute for the idea of the commune. The idea of the commune meant obviously a communal organisation of life which would unite the interests of the mass of the working class, not just those sections actually employed in factories and workshops. In his ideas on social organisation, James Guillaume, a uh, close associate of Bakunin, expanded on the nature of communal 
organisation in both countryside and city. Um, the idea of the commune met with approval at the 1818 Congress of the Jura Federation, uh, which drafted the, the statement I talked about already. Um, okay, could you, oh yes, the rise of anarcho-syndicalism as an alternative current. Um, I, um, the crush in the Paris uh, Commune brought on um, a long period of reaction and repression through, throughout Europe and, and for that matter, the United States. Um, and the bullying tactics of um, social democrats like Jaurès, Hindman, Millerand, etc., to physically excuse anarchists and um, libertarian socialists from the Socialist Congress of the 1880s. Uh, with this isolation of, of the anarchists, there was, there was increasingly narrowing interpretation of the ideas and tactics of propaganda by the deed. Originally, it was meant to mean exemplary action by a small group of revolutionaries to illustrate tactics of direct action, but then it became associated with individual attacks, bomb attacks on um, individual members of the ruling class. And <clears throat> A move away from um, mass organisation, organisation amongst the working class, developed in the international towards small and sometimes secret groups organised through affinity of friendship and political conviction. And that created uh, isolation for the mass of the working class. Um, so by the... Um, late 1890s um, there was a reaction to this uh, anarchists began to realize that they were isolated they they they, they started turning towards the, uh, the the unions which at that time were dominated by social democrats and began to um um move into them and into the uh, what, what were known as the bourse de travail uh, as a result of this uh, a new current emerged within anarchism now, um, agitation in the workplace is always an important part of Bakunin and Kropotkin's tactics, they, and they, they, they emphasised that. But anarcho-syndicalism as a current was distinct. Um, it defended the interests of the workers in the here, here and now, it supported direct action and anti-parliamentarianism, and it looked towards providing the organisation for the coming free society through the revolutionary syndicates, syndicate or um, unions. Okay, move on please. And it, it, it moved away from one weapon amongst several that the working class to use both in everyday struggle in times of revolutionary upheaval to the main means of bringing about the social revolution and the ensuing free society. <coughs> For example, it was the key plank in the program of the German anarcho syndicalist Freier Arbeiter Union Deutschland as a substitute for insurrection and armed revolution, and as a direct result of the defeat of the German Revolution of 1918. And so the general strike came to be seen as a substitute for insurrection on head on conflict with the state, whereas the idea of the commune was always intimately associated with revolutionary upheaval. Okay, could you uh, pass on? Um, both Kropotkin and the Italian anarchist Malatesti uh, saw a great potential for organising workers as seizing the means of production. I mean, Malatesta, um, he was in Britain during the, the big strikes of um, mass strikes of, of 1889, and he was very much influenced by that. But um, he began to um, see that since the great struggle for which we prepare ourselves is an essentially economic struggle, is on the economic ground that agitation has to take place. Okay, could you? 
move forward, please. But they also, uh, um, um, both Kropotkin and um, and uh, Malatesta saw the limitations of anarcho-syndicalism and why it was necessary for the creation of the commune and for an emphasis on the communes. And Kropotkin said it is necessarily under the banner of the independence of the municipal of the municipal and agricultural communes that the next revolutions will be made it is also in the independent communes that socialist tendencies are inevitably going to appear it is there that the first outlines of the new society will be sketched out <coughs> okay hang on Sorry about that. Uh, the battery on my computer was running low. Um, uh, and Malatesta agreed that the anarchist movement had, had in the decade of the 1880s isolated itself in the working class movement. Now it's going to another extreme, losing itself in a syndicalist movement that was open to reformism, bureaucratization, and opportunism. Okay. Uh, as Malatesta said, um, as far as I, I'm concerned, I accept the principle of the general stri strike and promote it as much as I can. I have done so for several years. Uh, the general strike has always struck me as an excellent means to set off the social revolution. However, let us take care to avoid falling under the dangerous illusion that the general strike can make the revolution superfluous. We are expected to believe that a suddenly halting production, the workers will starve the bourgeoisie into submission within a few days. Personally speaking, I can think of nothing more absurd. The first to starve to death during a general strike will not be the bourgeoisie have all the accumulated produce at their disposal, but the workers who only have their labour to live on. Um, OK, could you move forward, please? Um, and um, another anarchist was to say that syndicalist cat, syndicalism, Jean Grave, that is a French anarchist, syndicalism, syndicalism can and must be self-sufficient in its struggle against exploitation by the employers, but it cannot pretend to be able to solve the social problem by itself. Now, um, OK, would you move forward, please, on to the Butchin thing? Murray Butchin, the uh, American anarchist and uh, pioneer of municipal uh, municipalism. Um, um, he is deeply, he has a lot of criticisms of anarcho-syndicalism. A lot of them, are, I think, are, are deeply flawed uh, in the way he interpreted the, um, the proletariat as in a narrow way as the industrial working class um and he often held the accusation of vulgar marks at his opponents when he, when he was just as guilty of that offense in his understanding of what constitutes the proletariat however sometimes his salvos hit home as can be partially seen in the following in modeling themselves structurally on the bourgeois economy the syndicalist unions tended to be Become the organizational counterparts of the very centralized apparatus uh, they profess to oppose. Uh, Erico Malatesta, fearing the emergence of, of bureaucracy in the new union movement, warned that the official list to of the working class a danger only comparable to that provided by the parliamentarian. Both lead to corruption, and from corruption to death is but a short step. And we've seen that uh, classically illustrated uh, with the um, very well paid and corrupt and supine union leaderships that we've seen 
not just in Britain, but all over the world. And um, these anarchists saw in syndicalism a shifting focus from the commune to the trade union, from all of the oppressed to the industrial proletariat alone, from the streets to the factories, and in emphasis, at, at least, from the insurrection to the general strike. Okay, can you move on, please? All right. Uh, so uh, that's the um, the end of my my section of the uh, of the talk. So I'll, I'll hand over to to Bonnie. So we've talked about the commune in the past, and we haven't had that many examples of it. Really, it has been mostly an idea. Um, but the question is, can it be used as an inspiration? And I think it can. So if we first look at the commune thinking it as being it's a geograph it's based on a geographical locality so today you could think of it as being part of a borough in london you could think of it as a village you could think of a, about it as a, a town um, but basically it's based in real space which of course is quite different from the way a lot of people do politics this, these days which is basically on cyberspace the commune is something that is in what has to happen in a physical space it would be the basis for decision making and it's the place it's important because it's the place where people do everything you work in a, a place you produce you organize your distribution the services the housing everything that the people in the paris commune talked about um so really at the moment we've got capitalist spaces and our job is to move from capitalist spaces to the commune. And illustrated here is Westfield Shopping Market in a mall in East London. And this is the kind of space where now people interact with each other, where they here they are isolated consumers. They look like they're all there together as a mass, but basically it's all individuals and they're all occupied in the business of consuming and keeping capitalism going. On the other hand, we have what happened after Grenfell, where pe people from the locality, but also other parts of London, came together in order to organize the distribution of goods to the people that had suffered during the Grenfell fire. So these are two models, really. One is our capital the use of capitalist space, and the other would be a communist space. So today, localities, are, I talk about localities rather than communities, because we are a long way from actually having communities. It's a very overused word. I mean, there's divisions, obviously, between social class in the same locality. There's divisions between ethnic groups, religion. There's often different, even within Islam, for example, there's different mosques that different people go to. And their social circle is often based around that mosque rather than another mosque. The same with Christian churches. And we've got uh, divisions of, uh, around age. There's also a very big split between the workplace and the community. Um, especially in the larger cities, people will live in one locality, but they work in a completely different locality. So they hardly have time even to get involved where they live because they're so busy either commuting or working somewhere else. Um, also, politi political activity, it does usually involve either doing something in the workplace or in the community, so or the locality, as I've said. And there's also some differences for more rural areas and smaller towns, but still it is in localities that people undertake their political activity. So the commune is, a, we could look at it as a kind of popular power. Not really sure about using the word power, but um, I've taken this from uh, the Uruguayan Anarchist Federation, which uh, has a strategy that they call especificismo. And for them, the idea of having some kind of counter power, developing popular power is very important. And that their quote is, and this is obviously translated from the, the Spanish, so it's quite uh, grandiose in some ways. The concretization of popular power requires the preparation of the organizations of the oppressed classes. Mm -hmm. A strategy of popular power must have its essential premise, the construction of these bodies. And this is a fundamental political task that must be given priority right now. 
the defeat of the capitalist and authoritarian order and the building of the legitimate popular power is being carried out on a daily basis. So basically, the working towards the commune is something that we should be starting in the here and now. There are some pitfalls with this idea. Um, there's always the debate about to what extent can you prefigure a future society now um, within capitalism, whether this is possible or not. The commune, another way the commune has been used as an idea is this idea of some kind of lifestyle commune. Um, one of the examples is Christiana in Denmark, which has been very successful, but it's also a major tourist attraction and uh, really is completely isolated from the, from the rest of Denmark. So this is not really the kind of commune we're talking about, even though you might consider it quite an interesting experiment. Also, it's quite difficult to create decision making structures within what we have now. So a lot of people have talked about setting up citizens assemblies, but really, for example, XR, the citizens assemblies are really only there as some kind of consultation process to inform the government, inform the state. So really, they in some ways would actually legitimize the power of the state by saying, oh, we listen to the citizens assemblies. So I don't really see citizens assemblies as really that much of a prefigurative idea. That really, the communes themselves can really only be born in struggle. So it's something that to really achieve the idea of the commune, it's got to be part of a struggle and it's got to be formed as part of a revolution. So I think Grenfell, in many ways, it's not necessarily the revolution, obviously, but it was a great coming together. And uh, after it happened, all over the, that, that local area, plus over London, and really it touched uh, people around the country, that people began to organize and do what they could. New structures were set up and uh, actions were taken, and it looked really quite exciting, but it didn't take long for the traditional organizations, the divisions, etc., and the reliance on the state to come forward. So, for example, the group that the, of the survivors who actually were survivors of the tower ended up setting up their own group, different from the actual locality. Um, there was various community leaders who stepped up and, and, and acted as spokes, spokespeople for different parts of the community. So even though there was at the beginning this great coming together and potentially new structures, it soon um, reverted to more traditional forms of organization. But I still think that the commune can be a, a very inspiring idea because it gives us a kind of vision of what we're aiming for. Um, it is building up this idea of a counter power, even though we need to recognize that it can only go so far. It's also useful for making us think about how we're going to build these the communities, because as I said, we're not living in communities. Um, but it gives us some idea of, well, it gives us some ideas and some inspiration. It also is a way of fo focusing on uniting people. So because the key aspects of the commune is everyone together, everyone who lived in that locality, um, self-organization, and all of this is about making us more effective. So there are challenges to this. And one of them is the idea of how do we make the, li the link between workplaces and other parts of the locality. This is very difficult because people, it's very important to organize in the workplace. And, and a lot of effort needs to go into work it, organizing in the workplace. So there's not really almost that much time for people who are maybe involved in unions to also get involved in things that are going outside. Plus the problem I mentioned before, people don't actually live where they're, they're working. So how can you do this? Um, also, there's huge divisions within different groups in a locality. So those, how do you make make links between them. We've also got a problem of creating the physical spaces where we can actually meet up. In places like London, which are very large, very expensive, um, and also increasingly privatized, it's very difficult to find um, a space that people can afford. It's very difficult to create social center, centers and a lot of the space around us has been privatized or taken over by cars. So it's very difficult to find public places to meet up. 
We also need to think about how we create the structures and organizations that could bring people together because so many people are actually separated out into their own organizations, their own social groupings. And then there's the other issue of making links between people who are delivering public services like health or education and those people who are using it. So I have a few ideas in order to for us to think about. I do think a starting point is you really need to find out, get off the internet, don't look up, you know, I mean, the internet's fine for research to a point, but really get out there physically in the area that you live in and walk around and look to see what's there. What are the workplaces? What are the different estates and residential neighborhoods? Where are the shops and the markets where people are meet, you know, are people are mixing? Um, where are the parks and green spaces? What kind of cultural facilities are there? Are there allotments? Are there community gardens? You know, are there social centers? What's there in the, in the area that you live in? And this then might require a little bit more online research, but to find out who owns and controls the space, who owns the land in the locality. So for example, this is a, a little map of Tower Hamlets. Obviously we're faced with the issue of Canary Wharf is completely owned by a private corporation. Um, other bits are public land and other bits will be owned by developers and, and private firms. Then of course, there's the whole Olympic area, which is owned by the Olympic Development uh, Corporation. So it's important to know these things because to know who, who you're up against. Also, what campaigns and organizations exist? Often people, they're involved in their own campaign. They have no idea what other people are, are doing. And most importantly, get to know people, get to know your neighbors, get to know people who are do, involved in various activities. Really, you need to become part of that locality. So some ideas as well, if a group decided to set up as a sort of precursor of a commune, um, find out who lives and works in the same locality. There has to be some people that are working all over the place and living somewhere else. See if there's people who are actually their workplace and that where they live is in the same place. So they would be very helpful as making links between the workplace and the community. Um, you could develop solidarity groups, which has happened, for example, in, in Herringay, where then you can support local workers if they go on strike or if they have particular issues. You can also create worker user groups, for example, in education. Um, during the, the pandemic, it would have been an ideal opportunity for education workers to be getting together with parents to, to think about issues of safety and health, of course, the NHS. Uh, the people who use the health service have, have tried to show solidarity with health workers. Welfare benefits, culture, these are areas where the workers who work in them can maybe get together with the people who use them in a locality. Very important then to get hold of physical spaces, as I said, um, easier said than done in the cities where the price of such places is very expensive. Um, other campaigns that people can get involved in would be fighting for more green and open spaces. The more green and open spaces, it's better for everyone anyway, but it also is a place to meet where people can where play, where people can socialize. Community gardens and community kitchens have shown to be very useful as places to get all sorts of different people together, as have uh, markets and campaigns to save markets. Car free zones is another thing that people could campaign for, because if there's areas where people are walking around, they're more likely to so socialize than they are and their children will be out playing. That's going to happen more often than if, if the cars are clogging up the streets. I don't have any references for this, but I did had actually discovered at one point a few years ago that there was quite a lot of examples in places like New York City where the community, the, the people in a community were creating police no-go areas and they said that they would deal with antisocial behavior themselves. This is another thing, especially now that we're talking about um, the problem of repressive policing, that 
rather than just go on protest, why not look in your locality at what you can do to actually keep an eye on the police and try to start looking at potential community alternatives that have nothing to do with the police, not like neighborhood watch, but independent groups. Um, we've also seen in localities mutual aid networks springing up. And the kind of things that was happening there was, for example, food growers were bringing their food to people who needed food. There was an infrastructure of support and there was even a production. There's even workplaces, home workplaces where people were producing scrubs for local hospitals. These are all things that really are really ideas that are inspired by, by the commune. Other potential ideas would be to put on events and de develop campaigns that encourage different groups to come together. Because as I said, that's one of the main problems. There's so many different people all doing their own thing. And residents associations is one example, very important. Community gardens, I know in East London, Friends of Queen's Market has brought all sorts of different people together that would not normally socialize together. The other thing that people could do is to have an actual hard copy newspaper that you can distribute, but also social media that brings different issues together. In East London, we did have a paper that we called The Howler, and uh, we reported on all the different campaigns and activities that we could find that were going on. And what was interesting is when we actually distributed it, or talk to people who are writing articles for us, they didn't even know that any of these other campaigns were going on. So it was through our paper that we were able to show people that all this other stuff is going on in the locality. Regular stalls is of course important, having a presence so that you're talking to people and fighting racism and other forms of bigotry are crucial because it's hard to unite and create a community when it's divided by things like racism. So those are just some ideas. And, uh, but I think they're, they're all aiming for the kind of ideals that um, were expressed in the Paris Commune that anarchist communists have been aiming to achieve for over a hundred years.